All right, in this video, we're gonna do part three of some multiple choice practice for unit one of calculus A, B, and calculus B, C. And uh, this is the third video, so it's gonna start on, uh, I think problem number 23. So let's take a look at this, and it says, find the limit as x approaches infinity of uh, the quantity two x minus one, the quantity three x, nope, three minus x, um, and then over the quantity x minus one, the quantity x plus three. All right, so we need to find the limit. We're going to infinity, which is like a really important distinction, um, which means we need to, well, I'm gonna expand. So like, I don't, you don't really need to expand because probably at this point, if you've been doing a lot of these, uh, you can actually like look at it and see the solution. I'm gonna expand it anyway. When I expand, I'm not really uh, concerned about collecting like terms though, because now I'm going to infinity. I'm gonna divide through by the highest power of X in the denominator. So everything's getting divided by X squared. So I get six over x minus two, minus three over x squared plus one over x, and all over one plus two over x minus three over x squared. Now all of these constants divided by x to any power are going to zero. The only things that are left are negative two and one. So the answer is gonna be negative two. You actually could have done this just by searching out the highest power of x in the numerator when you expand it and uh, in the denominator. So look for the highest power. So what that means is like, uh, quote unquote, at infinity, two uh, X minus one and a three minus X is approximately negative two X squared. Like there's other stuff, but the X squared is so much more powerful that uh, the other stuff is inconsequential. And then similarly, uh, X minus one, X plus three is uh, approximately X squared. So we're basically doing negative two X squared divided by X squared, which is gonna give you the negative two. So. That's another way to do it informally, certainly on multiple choice. Open-ended, I would do the stuff that's in the darker purple uh, because I think you should do better work, but there you have it. Same basic question, so same basic thing. Uh, we don't need to expand this time, we're going to infinity. If we're going to negative infinity because this is a rational function, we would get the same answer. Um, so dividing everything I see by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is x cubed. So every single thing gets divided by x cubed and then everything that's a constant divided by x to any power is going to zero. So the only things left are one and four. So one fourth is our answer. And there you go. All right, let's take a look at this one. Same, same basic problem. Uh, I should have like sorted the problems a little better uh, and arranged them, but I didn't do that. So we're still going to infinity. Uh, I'm gonna use the same technique. So here, you know, highest power in the numerator is three n cubed. So it's basically just three n cubed. In the denominator, it's basically just n cubed. Three n cubed over n cubed is three, so the answer is three. Now I'm gonna do the work because I think you should always look at the work and see it and do correct, nice work. Um, but to find the limit, you don't actually need to do the work in this case. You can just look at it and say like dominant term in the numerator, three n cubed. Dominant term in the denominator, n cubed. So three n cubed over n cubed is three. So this this is the work, but you know you can do it in your head. All right, for which of the following does the limit as x approaches four, so we're going to four, um, of f of x exists? It actually would be really weird if this question was about any other value since four is, if you look at all three graphs, four is the only interesting value. Um, all right, so we need the limit from the left and the limit from the right. So what I do is I just trace from the left and then from the right. So uh, there you can see you're kind of approaching, it looks like two, I guess, and here you're also approaching two. So since you're approaching the same value, that limit exists. So uh, number one exists, which means that um, B and C from a test taking standpoint could not be the answer because uh, if one works, then two can't be the only answer and three can't be the only answer. So we can actually cross those out. And then let's do it for graph two. Um, really, oh no, we do have to check it. So from the left, uh, we approach that. From the right, we approach that. They're approaching the same value. So uh, two also works. And since two also works, and the only other options were one and two or one and three, that has to be the answer. But let's look at three anyway, just to see. So if we go from the left, uh, the limit from the left I would say is three-ish. I don't think I did a great job making these. Um, and then uh, the limit from the right looks like it's two. So the limit from the left exists, the limit from the right exists, but they're not equal to each other, so the limit does not exist. Um, so that's, that's how you deal with limits. All right, so let's, let's look at another. This is the only calculator question on the entire thing. Uh, the graph of the function f is shown in the figure above. 
the value of the limit as x approaches 1 of sine of f of x is. All right. So this actually comes up a lot, and it's like a, a property that I think is not highlighted often enough. It is that if a function is continuous, so sine of x is continuous, if a function is continuous, you can move the limit inside the function. So since sine of x is continuous, we can say that the limit as x approaches 1 of sine of x, sine of f of x, sorry, um, is equal to the limit, no, to the sine of the limit of, I don't even know what I'm saying, the sine of the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. So that, that, that works because sine is a continuous function. It's continuous for all x. It doesn't really matter. So we can move the limit inside. Now all I need to do is work out the limit. So the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, we go to the graph. So you have to do from the left and from the right. So from the left, we're approaching 2. From the right, we're approaching 2. Don't get fooled by that point that's up there at um, 3, right? We're not, we're not going to end up doing the sine of 3. We're going to do the sine of 2 because we're taking the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Um, so this is just going to be the sine of 2. Uh, I used a calculator. So limit as x approaches 1 of sine of f of x. You can kind of like, like 1 radian is like almost 60 degrees. So 2 radians is like almost 120 degrees. The sine of 120 is the sine of 2 pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. So it's got to be like close to root 3 over 2, but like... Uh, that's a lot of ifs, right? We're like close to this, close to that, whatever. That's what the calculator said. All right, let's look at another one. These are A lot of these are very straightforward. Um, if f of x is this piecewise thing, so it's a natural log of x when x is between 0 and 2, inclusive. Uh, it's x squared natural log of 2. What a weird graph. Um, for 2 to 4, and we want the limit as x approaches 2. So uh, anytime you want to limit, you got to think about the limit from the left and the right. I would say uh, AP questions make you think about the limit from the left and the right more than like standard textbook questions do. So we want this. I always write down the limit from the left and then I replace it with the branch, right? So the branch when you're to the left of 2 is from 0 to 2, which is natural log of x. Natural log is continuous, so that's just natural log of 2. Doesn't actually matter that the function is defined to be the natural log of 2 at 2. All we're talking about is limits, like what should it be? Now we need the limit from the right. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. So when you're to the right of 2, you're supposed to use x squared uh, times the natural log of 2, which I still think is a weird function. x squared, natural log of 2. And then if we plug in 2, so natural log of 2 is just a number. That's not impacting anything. It's like, uh, it might as well be 6. Like, who cares? Uh, this is going to give me 4 times the natural log of 2. It's a, when I look at this problem, I don't know how they expect you to get it wrong based on, like, what they're giving you. I don't, I just don't know. I don't know, like, what like what you would do to get that. But the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x, which means that the limit does not exist. So this is non-existent. Um... If the question had been, what is f of 2? f of 2 is the natural log of 2, because you just plug it in. Um, but that wasn't the question, so it doesn't exist. All right, let's look at another. The graph of the function f is shown above. All right, it's like a triangle. Um, which of the following statements must be false? So I'm really bad at this. I tend to, like, pick the wrong thing. Um, all right, so f of a exists. Well, look at that. Like, at, at a, you definitely get a value f of a does exist, f of a exists is true, but we're looking for what is false, so that is not the answer. f of x is defined between 0 and a. So between 0 and a, which is really weird, um, I guess because we didn't name that like x-intercept over there on the right, we, we just, like a is the only, you know, reference point. But anyway, you can, on the open interval, it's not even a question. Like at the end point, maybe you might have questioned at a, um, even though we just said f of a exists. It's definitely defined, right? I mean, it's uh, just look at it. f of x is not continuous at x equals a. What is the definition of continuous? So uh, you need the limit to exist, the function to exist, and the limit equals the value of the function. So here we would need the limit to not equal the value of the function to not be continuous. And that is definitely the case. You can find the limit, right? So the limit, uh, I don't know, I guess you just kind of like trace along, right? Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that on the next one. But 
The limit does not equal the value of the function. The function is not continuous. So that statement is true, and we are looking for what is false, so that's not the answer. Um, here's the limit from the left. You get whatever, the top of that. Limit from the right, you get the top of that. Uh, so you get the same value. So that's definitely true, which means it is not false, so it is not the answer, which means E is the answer. But why? Well, uh, let's say to the left of A, we have a, a linear function with a positive slope. I'm just going to say it has a slope of 6, right? So that would mean that F prime is 6 to the left of A, so when X is less than A. And then uh, to the right, it looks symmetric to me, so I'm going to say uh, you get a negative 6 when X is uh, greater than A. So uh, the limit of F prime just straight up doesn't exist, right? Like you go from positive 6 to negative 6, no smooth transition. The limit does not exist. That is definitely the answer because that is false. And I confuse that all the time, just reiterating. We're looking for a false answer there. I usually just find... Like, if I do the first one and it's true, I'm like, ooh, true statement, and I just, like, circle it and move on. Like, that's that's where my perfect score would definitely go. Like, I'm, I'm going to get kicked out immediately because of that. Um, so this thing is false, and therefore the answer. All right, new problem. Uh, if A is not equal to zero, so if A is equal to zero, this is, like, a more annoying problem, potentially. Um, but A is not zero. The limit as X approaches A of X squared minus A squared over X to the fourth minus A to the fourth is... So uh, this is this is an algebra problem. A lot of differences of squares. College Board, the AP exam, loves difference of squares. So we got this. Um, and then this x to the fourth minus a to the fourth is a difference of squares. I mean, it's a difference of force, but you get x squared plus a squared, x squared minus a squared. So actually, I should have like not factored the numerator, and I could have just canceled right then. But we're going for it. Um, so limit... <laughs> So I'm just going to factor the denominator a little more. And then I will cancel. And like you probably already see what's happening here. So the x squared plus a squared stays. Then we're going to have x plus a, x minus a. And then those cancel. And we get 1 over x squared plus a squared. Still taking the limit because there's still an x. right? So when you're showing your work, as long as the variable that you're taking the limit of um, is, in, you know, is in the thing you're taking the limit of, you need to write the limit. So this is 1 over a squared plus a squared, 1 over 2a squared. If you had asked me going into this problem, I would have said I thought this limit didn't exist. Like, I just, it, it felt to me like there was going to be, like, a vertical asymptote at, at a. Um, but there wasn't. So nice. Let's take a look at the next one. Figure above shows a graph of function f with domain 0 to 4. All right, which of the following statements are true? So we're looking for true things. All right, so this, it looks like a limit question. So we're looking for the limit from the left. So boom, that limit definitely exists, right? From the left. So we just need from the left, and that approaches a finite value, so it exists. Um, the limit from the right exists. So we approach from the right, boom, we get that. It definitely exists because we get a finite value. So the limit from the right exists. So 1 and 2 are true. If 1 and 2 are true, then 3 has to be true. Uh, nope, sorry. Oh my god, I was totally wrong on that. Uh, the limit from the left exists, the limit from the right exists, but they are not equal, and therefore the limit does not exist. That's that's Mean Girls right there, if you've ever seen that movie. Ancient movie at this point, but still worth it. Good movie. Um, all right, so only one and two are true. I almost completely flubbed that. Uh, yeah, the limit from the left exists, the limit from the right exists, but they're not equal. That's the definition of a jump discontinuity. And you can look at it, right? If you're playing like a, a 2D side-scrolling video game, you'd have to jump to get from, uh, you know, to the left of two to the right of two. I guess you could just fall, um, but they're not called fall discontinuities. So let's take a look at the next one. All right. Let f be the function defined above. So it's this piecewise thing. I hate these kinds where, like, it's it very explicitly should have just been simplified. So f of x is... 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2. And that's only true when x is not equal to 2. Why not just simplify those right away? I don't know why the people who write problems do that. I do it because they do it. But, like, uh, it's kind of weird. And then uh, the function is k when x is equal to 2. Let f be the function. Oh, I just read that. For what value of k is f continuous at x equals 2? All right, what does it mean to be continuous? It means that the limit exists, the function exists, and the limit equals the value of the function. So with what we've been provided, all we can really do, I'm going to rewrite f because it's annoying the way it's written. Um, all we can really do is find the limit. So we'll find the limit 
And then whatever the limit is, we will define the value of the function to be. So the limit, once you've eliminated that removable discontinuity, um, the limit as x approaches 2, use the part that doesn't include 2, right? So that's going to be the 2x plus 1. When you approach 2, you definitely get 5. Um, and so if we define that to be f of 2, the function will be continuous. Therefore, we need k, which is going to give us f of 2, um, to equal 5. So I would say the answer is 5. All right, we got one more. And then we are done with this. So if the graph of y equals ax plus b over x plus c, this, I feel like this particular problem is like pretty famous. I've seen this type of problem in a lot of um, review books. I've seen it on like the actual AP exam at some point. Um, oh, it's a little twist at the end, like here, what is the value of a plus c instead of like what's a, what's c, whatever. Um, horizontal asymptote at two, vertical asymptote at, th at negative three. Um, so they're just testing your knowledge of, of what those things mean. So horizontal asymptote is a limit to infinity. So I'm going to take the limit to infinity. Limit is x approaches infinity of ax plus b over x plus c. Divide through by the highest power of x in the denominator. So I'm going to get just a plus b over x over 1 plus c over x. If x goes to infinity, b over x and c over x both go to 0, so we just get a. That's the horizontal asymptote, which means a must equal 2. So now we know a. We also need to know c. We don't need to know b, which is good, because we do not have enough information to find that. Um, so vertical asymptotes are where uh, a function is, uh, well, it's a 0 of the denominator that doesn't cancel. So uh, we need x plus c to equal 0. So x plus c equals 0, which means that x equals negative c. So x equals negative c, but also x equals negative 3. So it must be the case that negative c is equal to negative 3. I do not like the way this problem is playing out, but like that needs to be the case. And then uh, c must be positive 3. Then we add them and we get 5. So there is that like little twist at the end there where uh, I don't know if they made it harder than it needed to be, but like whatever, you know, it's a review for the AP exam. Um, all right, so that's... That's it. That's 30. If you watched all three videos, 33, I think, really good review problems um, from unit one of AP Calculus A, B, and B, C. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.